Hey guys, welcome back to part two of your numbers notes over the Vietnam War. Um, we left off talking about POWs, which is prisoners of war. So like I was saying, there were more than 3,000 Americans who were captured by the North Vietnamese and became prisoners of war. So a lot of these prisoners of war were actually pilots who were shot down over North Vietnamese territory and then captured. So um, a lot of these pictures I'm showing you here, that was the case. These were pilots or uh, part of the crew on planes that would, that would be caught. So they obviously had um, equipment to be able to be ejected from the plane and parachute down, which if you're floating down to the ground in a huge parachute, well, you're a pretty easy target to spot and find, especially if you're over enemy territory. And that's what happened to many of these people who were captured. And uh, here we actually see a picture. Um, this would be um, an NVA soldier probably. And here's this plane that was shot down and is going down. And you can see right up here, here's the person in the, the parachute that's floating down. So that person uh, obviously oh, would have been captured. Um, so some of these prisoners of war were prisoners of war for over eight years which is a staggering amount of time to to be a prisoner of war just think about what can happen in eight years so um obviously these these men that were captured they had families um and their families didn't know their whereabouts didn't know what had happened to them had no idea if they were dead or alive you know for up to eight years so that would be incredibly straining on them and their family and what they went through as prisoners of war was terrible. It was a tragedy. I personally know two gentlemen who were prisoners of war during the Vietnam War, um, which is actually these two guys right here. When I went to Vietnam in college, I actually traveled with Vietnam War veterans. So uh, these are two of my good friends. John Furr is here on the left and Norm McDaniel is here on the right. John was a prisoner of war for six years, and Norm was a prisoner of war for seven years. And in those years that they were prisoners of war, they were starved, they were beaten, they were tortured, um, and they were treated terribly inhumane during that time. So many prisoners of war were kept at the infamous Hao Lo prison in Hanoi, which uh, actually this picture right here is in front of that prison present day. Now it's more of like a museum type of place. So uh, the Hao Lo prison was more commonly known as the Hanoi Hilton, which is sort of just a joke uh, among the POWs that were captured and uh, were in prison there. Because obviously it was nothing like a, a nice hotel, but it was one of those things that just sort of was a nickname to sort of make light of the situation and help people feel a little bit better. So here is an aerial view of the Hanoi Hilton. You can see it has walls all the way around it. It's a pretty big compound. Um, present day, only about half of that still exists. Um, the rest of it was sort of tore down, and there's really, uh, you know, only about half left, which is now, like I said, sort of a museum. Um, here are the, the prisoner uniforms that the POWs had to wear, and they nicknamed them the Hanoi Hilton Pajamas. Again, that was just to make light of the situation to help them feel a little bit better. So here we see uh, a picture of POWs. It looks like it was maybe for like Valentine's Day or something because you see like this big paper heart in the background. Um, this is just a propaganda photo, okay? Don't let the smiles fool you. American POWs were badly mistreated, but the North Vietnamese were infamous for staging photos like this to make it look like they were treating the POWs well, even though they were not at all. So um, this was just a trick, basically, so, um, so people wouldn't try, to, try too hard to get them released, pretty much. So at the Hanoi Hilton, the POWs were kept in really small, um, not heated cells. Um, they didn't really have a proper bed. They didn't have blankets. 
Um, oftentimes there was no toilet in the room. They just would have to pick a corner basically. Um, so it was really stark living conditions. It was, uh, not a comfortable place to be kept. And they were not given um, very much food. The food that they were given was not very good, not very nutritious, and they weren't really granted any uh, medical care or medicines either. And um, some of these people, right, they had just been ejected from a plane. So some of them had injuries when they were first captured. And many of the times those injuries were not treated. So people who might have got a broken bone ejecting from the plane, it just healed how it healed. And oftentimes that was incorrectly. Um, so they just were treated really terribly. Here is a firsthand account of a POW um, just talking about sort of the food that they were um, given. So uh, this is from Mike McGrath. He writes, our normal diet consisted of either rice or bread and a bowl of soup. The soup is usually made from a boiled seasonal vegetable such as cabbage, kohlrabi, pumpkin, turnips, or greens, which we very appropriately called sewer greens, swamp grass, and weeds. The flavor was very bland because no spices were used. I remember, whoops, let me go back here. I remember one very bad food period when we had two daily bowls of boiled cabbage soup for four straight months. Occasionally, we would find a small chunk of meatless bacon fat in the soup. So for four straight months, they ate cabbage soup. That's terrible. Okay, so bland side dishes of cooked vegetables or fish appeared with more regularity during the last two years. So the reason that they fed them a little bit better the last two years of their imprisonment is because they figured the war was getting ready to come to an end, and they didn't want it to look like they had starved these men when they were released. So Mike McGrath also writes, I lost 50 pounds in the first three months of my captivity. Many others lost considerably more. It was not unusual for a man who was over six feet tall to weigh as little as 120 pounds. So guys, a six foot tall person should not weigh 120 pounds. Okay, that is very thin. That is dangerously thin. Um, and that just goes to show you how uh, poorly they were being treated and how little they were being fed. Um, they were often tortured by their guards as well. Um, in this picture, basically what uh, this painting or this drawing is representing is this was a method of torture that the North Vietnamese would use on American POWs. They would set them on a stool and um, when they were on the stool, they had to sit upright. They weren't allowed to fall asleep. They weren't allowed to just, you know, hunch over or anything like that. Or um, they would have water thrown on them or they would get beaten. And this was basically a means of torture to try to get information out of them. So these POWs that were captured, they wanted to know like, hey, what was your mission when you were flying over North Vietnam? What were you trying to accomplish? Who is your general? They would try to get information out of these American prisoners that they could use against America in the war. So um, exhaustion and pain would obviously take their toll in a method of torture like this where you're not allowed to sleep, you're not allowed to slunch over, you're just supposed to sit in the same position in the stool day and night. So um, some men were able to remain seated like this for 15 to 20 days before they would finally give in and release some sort of information. Um, one man was known to make a superhuman effort to resist, and he lasted 33 days on the stool before giving in. Now, just because they gave the Vietnamese information doesn't mean it was necessarily real information. Sometimes they would just make stuff up, so the Vietnamese would leave them alone. So they'd say something like, oh yeah, my general is uh, General Scooby, and um, my colonel was... Uh, Captain Scooby-Doo or something like that. You know, they'd use like American television shows um, to give them information. So it wouldn't be real information, but, it, you know, they just make stuff up basically. So um, sometimes they were caught in this, sometimes they weren't. But um, these prisoners did not want to give away any information that would somehow um, hurt the other men that they served with. 
Okay, here's another form of torture where um, they would bind your arms over your head like that and put your, your head between your knees, which would make the blood rush to your head, and it was obviously a very uncomfortable position. Um, another means of torture is they would hog tie people and hang them from the ceiling um, to where, again, their, their face would be pointed down and all the blood would rush to their head, and they would leave them like that for days at a time, dangling from the ceiling. So, um, really terrible means of torture. All right, guys, I'm going to end this video right here, and we will move on to part three of numbers in the next video. See you there.